Good evening. Let's talk about some things that everybody who's uh, doing some 3D printing is uh, affected about. Uh, that is uh, how to improve your strength of your 3D printed things. Uh, in my case, <coughs> I was uh, quite fascinated by the fact that you could design the nuts and bolts and 3D print them and they actually works. The problem is that uh, the nuts uh, seem to have a strength that uh, really works and the bolts, no, <laughs> they didn't. <coughs> and uh, my mistake was uh, not knowing exactly how to print them. So uh, I'm going to show you what I have discovered and uh, hopefully you can learn something about it. So, let's start by designing a simple bolt in Fusion 360. You don't have to do anything special about this, you don't have to define anything, just create a simple circle. And as we are going to make a metric 10mm bolt, we start with a metric 10mm circle. Stop the sketch, extrude it, just make it 60mm. Uh, and we can also make the threads. Be sure to check the model, or not. If you don't, it's not going to be a model, it's just going to be shown in the model here in Fusion. I've done that mistake a lot of times and I ended up with prints that are just useless. Uh, you can also check that you have the right height of the lengths. Uh, defaults to M10 times 1, 1.5. I think that's more or less standard. So we go ahead and model this. And then we have the basic foundation for the model. Uh, we can also edit the sketch again and make the bolt head and make a circumscribed polygon. Let's make this. Ah, let's make it 12. Six sides, that's perfect. And then we can go ahead and extrude that face also. Let's make it 10 millimeters. So we end up with a bolt that is 50 millimeters in the thread count, in the thread, thread length. And now we can save this. Ah, oh, sorry. Need to go to the body. Export the whole model as an STL for it bolt, and that's it. Then we can open a slicer. I use slicer PE since I'm printing everything on the Prusa Mark III. I'm just drag and drop the bolt, and as you can see defaults to standing because that's the way we designed it. And if we're going to slice this now and check what it actually does. Now we can set this 100% solid. We don't need any support, so slice again. And if we check every layer, we're going to see that the layers are just covering the diameter of the bolt, and that's going to be the weak part. So it will look good, the threads will work 100%, would be perfect, but the strength wouldn't be optimized. So what happens if we create another bolt? Make two of them. But this time we rotate it <coughs> 270 degrees, <coughs> or you can rotate it 90 degrees in the other direction. And now we need some support for this, because <coughs> as you can see, you can't print in the <coughs> middle of there, so you need to <coughs> add some support to this. So support on build plate only, and then we slice that one. Then we check the result. And if we zoom in now, go down to 
down to the uploads. And you can say the, see that the layers are <coughs> rendered quite different. So instead of having just this surface as the only thing layer, layer addition, you get all of this surface. So it's going to improve the strength quite a lot. What you also can do is in the printer settings, where you can check on support material. Oh, let's see if I can find this again. No, sorry, the infill. <coughs> As you can see now, it's going cross. So every other layer is 45 degrees from the other, but you still have very short fills in the inlay. So if you set that to 180 degrees and slice again, you can see you have the, <coughs> the infill going the whole length of the bolt. So every other layer is crossed in this section and the next layer is crossed on the whole length of the threads. So that's another way to further expand your strength of the bolt. So it will make quite a difference to do this. And uh, this is not just uh, applicable on uh, nuts and bolts. You have to pretty much, uh, if you design for it, something that's going to have a lot of tension on them, a lot of strength, a lot of pressure on them, <coughs> then you might consider the, way, the direction you're actually setting it up in Slicer because it makes a whole lot of difference. So let's go ahead and print this. Export the G-code. And we just have to wait a bit. No, sorry, we don't have to wait a bit. I'm not going to let you <coughs> sit here and uh, watch this for four, four and a half hours, so I have already printed some bolts. And it's very hard to see on this picture, but they pretty much look the same. This is the one printed standing up, and this is the one printed with support. And you get a rough surface on the one with support, so it actually, you need to have a simple tapping set. Make sure it's the same thing. metric 10 and 1.5 in the thread counts, uh, thread heights. And then you have just have to run it through, clear up the support so you get it to work with the knot. But the main difference is this one that's printed standing up, it's actually not that hard to break. On the other hand, this that is printed lying down with support, there is absolutely no way I can break this. I might be a bit soft in my arms, but I can't manage to break this. So it's quite a lot difference in strength on this one. So there you have it. If you need to add some further strength to the nuts and bolts or anything else you're printing, Make sure you print it in the right direction, so we set up the, the object right in the slicer and uh, play around with the, how you set the uh, infill angle and uh, it will make a lot of difference. And you can also in Fusion actually test, do a simulation on some stress test on objects, but uh, I'm going to show that on a different video. So that's all for now, take care. See you guys.